Hello and welcome to Freewave TV. I'm Paige Friedman, bringing you the latest in maritime news from around the world. Today in maritime news, shipping company Maersk raises its profit guidance as it expects global supply chain issues to persist. The first ship of Ukrainian grain scheduled to safely arrive in Istanbul tonight. The Lebanese government holds a ship that is believed to be carrying stolen Ukrainian grain. Grain silos at Beirut port collapse as they succumb to fire. A CMA-CGM subsidiary gets joint ownership of an Indian port terminal. The U.S. reorganizes an FMC bureau to enforce the Shipping Act. Authorities investigating the cause of an oil spill in the Mississippi River. New Zealand lifts restrictions on travelers and will welcome cruises again. Shipping company Maersk has increased its 2022 profit guidance after it beat its quarterly revenue expectations, as it expects the global supply chain crisis could last longer. Maersk anticipates that its earnings before interest, taxation, depreciation, and amortization will be $37 billion as opposed to the $30 billion it was previously predicted to make. Before that, Maersk expected the amount to only be $24 billion. The raise in the guidance comes as congested supply chains that boosted freight rates is still going on in the world. Shipping out of Ukraine has finally come back. According to Turkey, the first ship carrying corn, which departed from Odessa Monday night, is scheduled to safely dock in Istanbul tonight. Upon its arrival, it will be inspected by Russian, Turkish, Ukrainian, and United Nations officials, and then it will continue to the port of Tripoli in Lebanon. Even though Turkey is confident it will arrive safely, there are some concerns as the vessel will have to clear sea mines as it travels through the conflict zone. Despite these concerns, the return of the shipments is seen as a positive step, as areas in the world are in desperate need of the grain. While that vessel is still en route to its final destination, a Syrian ship has been detained in Lebanon for allegedly carrying stolen Ukrainian grain. Last week, the ship arrived in Tripoli after departing from the Russian-occupied port of Feodosa and allegedly taking on 10,000 tons of stolen Ukrainian flour and barley. The ship was supposed to let off half of its grain in Tripoli and then bring the other half to Syria. The source denied that the grain was stolen from Ukraine, but Lebanese officials don't believe the claims that it is actually Russian grain. Yesterday, the northern part of the grain silos at Beirut port collapsed after succumbing to a prolonged fire. The fire in the silos was going on for several weeks, and according to officials, it happened as a result of summer heat igniting fermenting grains that were left rotting inside since an explosion that took place two years ago. CMA CGM's subsidiary CMA Terminals and JM Boxy Ports and Logistics have won the bid for Jawaharlal Nehru Port Container Terminal. India's busiest container port will now operate for 30 years as Nahava Shiva Freeport Terminal and CMA Terminals and JM Boxy Ports and Logistics will each have 50% ownership of the terminal. In other news, the U.S. Federal Maritime Commission has created a new Bureau of Enforcement, Investigations, and Compliance to enforce the Shipping Act. The reorganization of the FMC's investigative and prosecution functions comes after an internal examination took place to figure out how to increase the effectiveness of FMC enforcement and compliance activities. Chairman Daniel Maffei said the reorganization enhances the FMC's capacity to closely monitor the conduct of the ocean carrier companies and marine terminal operators to ensure compliance with the law and fairness for American importers and exporters. Also in the United States, an investigation is still going on after an LR tanker, Hafnia Rhein, spilled over 2,000 gallons of oil in the Mississippi River last Thursday. The crew was able to secure the spill but Coast Guard pollution responders believe that around 2,100 gallons of fuel oil went into the river and that the spill contaminated at least 50 barges that were nearby. After the pandemic shut down cruise operations around the world back in March 2020, New Zealand is now one of the last countries to get rid of its restrictions on travelers and to open its ports for cruise ships again. 
the government is hopeful that the return of cruising will help boost the country's economy. The decision to reopen borders comes just in time for the peak season. And now, here's the news that's making headlines around the world. Since Monday, China has continuously suspended imports from 35 Taiwanese exporters of biscuits and pastries, warning the self-governed island ahead of a potential visit to Taiwan by U.S. House of Representatives Speaker Nancy Pelosi. Taiwan continues to prepare for the worst-case scenario by preparing its air raid shelters. As U.S. House of Representatives Speaker Nancy Pelosi is expected to arrive in Taiwan today, an unspecified source told Reuters several Chinese warplanes flew close to the borders, dividing the Taiwan Strait as warships sailed near the unofficial dividing line. Meanwhile, the U.S. deployed four warships, including an aircraft carrier, at the east end of Taiwan. China's defense and foreign ministries did not immediately respond to requests for comment. Reuters' anonymous source defined the actions as routine deployments. In other news, U.S. President Joe Biden announced that the American military successfully killed Ayman al-Zawahiri, the leader of al-Qaeda on Sunday, in a counterterrorism drone strike carried out by the CIA in the capital of Kabul. Al-Zawahiri is said to have planned the 9-11 attacks with Osama bin Laden and was labeled as one of America's most wanted. Biden concluded his announcement by adding that justice had been served and that the terrorist leader was no more. As tensions seem to be at an all-time high, at the opening of a conference for countries signed up to the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty, and UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres warned the world that we as a planet are one mistake from experiencing a catastrophic nuclear war. Guterres added that we have been considerably lucky this past year amid rising global tensions, as he urged the world to renew a push towards eliminating all such weapons. While the United Nations is thinking for the future, Palestinians living on the Gaza Strip are taking things daily as a searing summer heat wave continues to consume everyday life, leading to longer power outages that can last up to 10 hours a day. As a population of 2.3 million people continues to struggle to live, areas that usually require around 500 megawatts of power per day in the summer are receiving only 180 megawatts. Doctors in Sierra Leone are leaving dozens of patients in hospital waiting rooms that are in need of care as they began a strike yesterday that protests their low pay and lack of benefits. The doctors are demanding fuel allowances of 45 liters per week, while claiming they lost between 20% to 40% of their take-home pay in May after the government benefits they received during the pandemic ended. Health Minister Austin Demby said it was difficult to understand why the strike was necessary, adding that the doctors will get all of their demands filled by September. Many believe the strike is necessary to not only address the backlog of extra pay, but to reset the system that the doctors no longer believe in. After energy and oil prices soared this past quarter, BP reported that it's seeing its biggest quarterly profit in 14 years. BP's profits for the second quarter were the second highest in the company's history. Oil companies benefit from the rising energy prices, which have driven up profits at rivals Shell and Concentrica. The profits come as typical household energy bills have been estimated to hit more than 3,600 pounds a year this winter. Dale Vince, the founder of energy supplier Exotricity, said he believed it was time to increase taxation on the profits of oil and gas companies. U.S. Kentucky Governor Andy Bashir warned on Monday that more dangerous weather is approaching the region after they suffered torrential rains that led to flooding, destruction, and the deaths of at least 37 people. Officials say the weather has hastened rescue efforts. Despite the obstacles, rescue authorities continued to save residents and provide food and shelter for the thousands who had been displaced. Many residents continue to be unprepared as the bad weather continued through Monday night, leading to more deaths. Bashir described the floods as a continuing natural disaster. The National Weather Service forecasted several rounds of continuing showers and storms through Tuesday. Trying to right past wrongdoings, Ghana's president, Nana Afuku Otto, took to Twitter, requesting what he describes as long overdue reparations to Africans for the harm inflicted by the slave trade centuries ago. 
In a series of tweets, the African leader said the slave trade's effects were devastating to the continent and the diaspora. He also added that the entire slavery period stifled Africa's economic, cultural, and psychological progress. As Ghana's leaders stand up for the people of the past, many would be shocked to learn the story of Aliko Orgujuko, who was reportedly selling handkerchiefs in the Italian town of Sidivanova Marche on Friday, where he was also beaten to death. A video illustrated a man on top of Osirguru, punching him with his bare hands in broad daylight. It also showed that no witnesses that saw the attack appeared to intervene. A 32-year-old Italian has been arrested on suspicion of murder and robbery. Ogorchuku's wife strongly said that she was only interested in one thing, justice. Over in the UK, British Airways announced suspending the sale of short-haul flights from Heathrow Airport for at least a week. As a result of Amsterdam's Schiphol Airport revealed, it was continuing a cap on passenger numbers until at least September. The uncalled-for action taken by British Airways will remove thousands of seats from the market, potentially boosting demand and raising costs with competitor companies. While some are looking for flights, other Brits are looking to back frontrunner Prime Minister candidate Liz Truss, who said she would drop proposals to outlaw multi-buy discounts on food and beverages heavy in fat, salt, or sugar, and wouldn't impose any additional taxes on junk food. According to Truss, British citizens want the government to put more effort into providing efficient transportation systems and communications infrastructure and reducing national health service waiting limits. Leading many of her supporters to speculate that she is planning on focusing on those issues rather than what Britons choose to eat. The supermarket chain Morrison's has launched a line of carbon neutral eggs from hens that feed on insects reared on the company's food waste. According to the Morrison's, Insects are a normal component of chicken's ancestors' diet and have no effect on the egg's quality, shelf life, or flavor. A report by Cambridge University proved that the eggs are carbon neutral. These eggs are the first product to be sold as part of the company's drive to be directly supplied by zero emission on British farms. We're now going to take over to Jean-Louis, who's going to share what's going on in the sports world. We're already eight months in, and in the midst of the smoking hot sun, but like the currents of the ocean, we reach a free wave. And this is your captain, Jean-Louis, from the states to across the pond here, your sports stories from across the globe. In England, the Commonwealth Games are underway. The multi-sport friendly has some results already on tap. As in cricket, the competition hometown England beat South Africa by 26 runs. Pending the results of the New Zealand-Sri Lanka matchup on Tuesday, England will advance to the semifinals. The 20-year-old sensation Jake Jarman wins the fourth gold of his games of the Volk competition, besting Samuel Dick and Gianni Regini Moran en route to the win. In the Lawn Bowls competition, Wales bested England 19-18 in the men's pairs finale, with Scotland taking hold of bronze. We shift gear to some football where after a medical emergency had stalled the competition, yesterday saw Watford beat Sheffield United 1-0. J.L. Pedro scored the lone goal in the 56th minute, leading to the win. Where yesterday was a lighter game on tap for most leagues, today will belong to the Champions League, as many qualifiers are taking place. The day starts off with Sheriff Terraspool taking on Victoria Pleasant at 6 p.m. their local time. The day has also a quartet of games following that matchup, including two nightcap games, Union St. Galois and Rangers, as well as Benkifa and FC Mithiland, taking place at 7.45 and 8 p.m., respectively, at their local time. For results on all those games, of course, stay tuned to Free Wave. Sticking on with some soccer news, Ajax Amsterdam has banned fans from asking players for their jerseys. This includes fans bringing signs to the Johan Cruyff's arena to implicate the action. The team has announced the move following an excess of jersey pleas, which due to crowd control cannot be upheld with the team and the devout fan base. The team was beaten 5-3 in their last matchup in this weekend's Super Cup match. 
In tennis, an upset law strikes the reigning Wimbledon champion, Elena Rubikina. In the opening round of the San Jose Mubadala Silicon Valley Classic, the 23-year-old lost to the seventh-ranked Daria Kazakhtina. When asked about the loss, Rubikina stated that her extended vacation following her first Grand Slam was part of the reason for her loss. Kazatakina advances to the Sweet 16 with the likes of Coco Golf, Naomi Osaka, and company to compete today. In golf, the BGA great Tiger Woods shuts down a contract with the LIV. The contract was reportedly north of $700 million. Woods had already been on record stating against stars who moved over to the LIV, such as Phil Mickelson and Dustin Johnson and others, as perhaps betraying the PGA. Woods is the first major star to deny an offer from the league, as the PGA has long been indebted to Woods' contributions, with his likeness crossing over to mainstream appeal, adding more money to both the PGA and Tiger's legacy. Same cannot be said for the National Women's Soccer League. As first reported by Eben Navoy Williams and Emily Caron of Sportico, one of the biggest sponsors, the cryptocurrency platform Voyager Digital, has filed for bankruptcy. The deal with the league was announced just this past year, giving the players both salary and stock within the ailing company. With Voyager working through the bankruptcy process, the search is on for a new sponsor for the soccer league. The NCAA head coach Rick Pitino is back in the news. Akin to the New York Knicks, his old team's controversy with Jalen Brunson, the news is with tampering issues within the recruitment process. The current Iona coach was said to be aware of authorized payments to players' families in ex-Adidas' consultant Merrill Code's book, Black Market. Leading to the NCAA's complex case unit, additional formal allegations of infractions against Patino, claiming that he had offered an excess of $100,000 payment to a father of a former recruit, Brian Bowen, back in 2017. As an investigation is underway, Patino denies these claims. Deshaun Watson has officially been suspended for six games without a fine for his famed, now, sexual assault case. The terms of the case is said to be appealed due to a lighter penalty than originally planned. The drama for the Browns quarterback looms on. With tough decisions in the NFL's way, the same can be said for the ongoing trials of Brittany Griner, who stands and finds herself on trial for her drug violation this past February. However, the lawyer for Griner has disclosed that a ruling has been expected very soon for the forward. The two-time gold medalist reported last week to possibly be used as a bargaining chip back to the States for Victor Bout, a convicted arms dealer who was detained by the American government earlier on. We'll keep you tuned to the new news and the new information, but until then, you know the drill. Stay locked to our website, YouTube, Instagram, and all our other socials soon to come. Until then, this is Jean-Louis, that's your news. Take care. That's all we have for today. For more detailed news, 
you can visit our website, www.freewavetv.com. On behalf of all of us here at Freewave TV, thanks for watching, and we'll see you our next newscast.